Welcome to a tiny parking lot next to some train tracks where I'm here for the first time in my life to drive a hydrogen powered fuel cell car. So this is technically an electric vehicle except you can put hydrogen in the tank and some magic happens to turn it into electricity. Uh, this is a very futuristic car and it's a very complicated car technologically inside and Full disclosure, I usually put this in the description of my videos anyways, but just to let you know, I am not a professional reviewer. I'm just a random guy who has some access to rental cars and I like sharing my kind of experience with everyone about it. So what does that mean? I actually don't know that much about this car in terms of the small details. So if you're looking for a comprehensive review that tells you what all the buttons inside do, this is not the video for you. However, if you just want to see a random guy take a hydrogen car out for the first time and see how stupid he is, then stick around. All right, I now have the keys to the car in my hand and welcome to the future, or at least for a Neanderthal like me. So. Wow. That's actually pretty cool. And there's a little lock button on the top of the handle, so... Ooh. Okay, so this car feels very different. Um, there's these big LCD screens in front of me, which is very futuristic cool um if you're like oh yeah my mercedes has this sorry i'm poor i've been driving cheap rental cars to me this is fancy i kind of don't know what the point of this one is and i think the rental car company put that one in because i already have two giant screens i don't know what that one's for um wow there's a lot of buttons here that's that's a lot of buttons <laughs> it's to a point i was like Okay, I'm probably gonna have to sit down for about 10 minutes to figure out how to do everything in this car. Um, let's see, adjust the seats. Ooh, they're electric, fancy. Yes, and then I think, is there a start button? There it is. Yeah, you see? An old man like me can figure this out possibly. Wow, it wants me to pick my language. Okay, I'm just going to say okay. Wow, these are some big fancy screens and then the little speedometer gauge clustery thing there. Beautiful high resolution LCDs. And I have no idea if the car is like on on because I'm so used to hearing an engine noise. But I'm sure I can drive off now. Um, let's see, I guess this is the parking brake. It's one of those stupid electronic -y things again, but it kind of has to be. And instead of a gear stick, we have these buttons. I think if you hit D, it means dog. Okay, it means drive. And then R means reverse. Okay. Pretty easy to figure out. And then all of the sort of other controls are here, but it's this huge mess. And I guess this thing controls, yeah, this infotainment screen here. Fancy. All right, so I want to charge my phone now, and I'm a bit spoiled for choice because there's one USB, two USB, three USB, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh. and a wireless cheat charger too. That's actually really cool. Okay, so this is the key fob. Um, there's some interesting buttons on here that I don't quite understand. But we'll find out, uh, especially the one that says hold and has a circle. I'm actually afraid to touch that one. But I think, just from critical thinking skills, that this is the sort of remote control move the car without you being in it buttons. I think that's it. Let's find out. Yeah, I don't know how this works, so never mind. I usually haven't done an engine shot in my videos, but hey, hydrogen fuel cell. I wanted to know what it looked like, and um, this is what it looks like. Uh, it looks engine-like? I don't know. I don't know what I was expecting. I don't know what you're expecting, but this is what it looks like.
All right, so this is a rather biggish SUV. Um, I've been in Japan too long. I don't think this is a full-size SUV, but it looks gigantic to me. So, yeah, this is the most spacious back seat I've seen in a while. This door actually opens really wide so people can get in and out very easily. You can actually just shove a baby seat in there by throwing it just with this gap. Then once you're inside, yeah, there we go. This is leg room. Whew. So if you're a bit old like me and you're like, this car is too futuristic to drive, get someone to drive it for you and you can just hang out back here. Enjoy the spaciousness. Do these things slide? No, but they do tilt. Woo. <laughs> so you can gangster lean in the back a bit. And look, there's even a nice full outlet here so if you want to plug in like a laptop or something to do some business not the one that comes out of your ass um but you know the one that makes you money you can actually do that back here and it looks quite fancy um for me at least i mean compared to an s-class not so fancy but you can just be like hey i'm all futuristic in this car screw you in your s-class unless you got one of those eqs's then it's not a fair fight but that's also much more expensive, so yeah. All right, let's see how much junk you can put in this trunk. Uh, let's try opening it. I think it's that one. Ooh, automatic, rise. Not the Toyota, but rise. Wow, someone, the last applicant here, left a newspaper. I thought I was old, but someone still reads newspapers. That's amazing. Anyways, let's get that out of the way get inside this is a very low trunk my head's actually above it um but yeah very deep thing in here i mean you can get a lot of cargo in here if you needed to it's just kind of like a sedan sized trunk it seems to be this extra load lippy thing here Nope, that's not more cargo space. This is an emergency triangle, and if you get a puncture, you can try to fix it yourself instead of having a spare. Uh, yeah, so cargo capacity's tight. Oh yeah, I forgot. I'm poor. Fancy. Okay, on the road in the Hyundai Nexo, or if you're British, the Hyundai Nexo. Um, both pronunciations are fine with me. Uh, so, first, let me talk about this random technology of this car as you drive along. The first thing I noticed is we're about to make a right-hand turn. You turn on the turn signal, and then the right sort of gauge cluster disappears and instead gives you a nice view with the blind spot camera to show you what you may hit while you're turning right. And that's actually really quite nice because it removes the excuse of accidentally running into someone if you're changing lanes or running into a pedestrian accident while you're making the turn. And that bit of technology I really like. Um, other than that, we have these paddles here that controls how aggressive the regenerative braking is and if you really want to save on hydrogen and be extra eco-friendly you should have it on maximum but then the car just really goes <laughs> all the time you can of course get used to it but if you kind of feel you can't pull this paddle a couple times and that effect goes pretty much nowhere now uh, so other technology features in this car that i am enjoying right now the one i'm genuinely enjoying are these cooled seats they're heated as well if you need them to be and i'm well aware that many other cars have that feature but this is the first time i've been in a car with cooled seats and it's lovely my ass has never been so chill in its life so how does this piece of rolling technology act as a car well it's actually really nice the interior is incredibly quiet because it's an electric vehicle. The power delivery is incredibly smooth because it's an electric vehicle. And the ride quality is actually not bad at all. 
and overall the comfort of the seats the quietness the nice supple ride this is such a comfortable car to be in and it damn well better be because uh, I just looked it up this car starts at 7.7 .7 million yen or about 70,000 US dollars and for that kind of money, I can buy two of the cars that I really want to buy now and a few years of parking and gasoline. So yeah, it's expensive, so it better be good. And the good news is a lot of it is good. In terms of performance things, it's an electric vehicle, so you expect acceleration to be very zippy and it is. There's a lot of instantaneous torque from the electric motor and it picks up speed reasonably quickly, but it's not as quick as, let's say, a Tesla for sure. And it's actually not that quick in general, but it's more than quick enough for what you need. And because the torque is instantaneous, it feels quick. And something that really surprised me about this car, especially since it's a high riding SUV where you're sitting up high and you have a good view over everything on the road it handles pretty well and not just that the steering is excellent um, I've heard Hyundai in recent days has really been focused on driving dynamics but I haven't driven a Hyundai in years and this is really nice the steering weight is kind of perfect there's actual feel when you're turning and yeah just overall this is a fairly fun car to drive and i'm quite enjoying my time driving this car around traffic to tokyo all right so parking this car it has automatic park features i have no idea how to use it however if you manually decide to park your car it's excellent it has the camera showing both sides and it has a 360 degree sort of overhead view of everything so if you need to park you actually don't need to see where you're going you just do this and this is very useful for Tokyo because this is a rather big car for the size of what I'm usually used to dealing with in Tokyo and I believe this car is exactly as wide as this parking space so you can make use of these cameras and make use of that 360 view to get yourself exactly in the middle of the space and of course it'll bong at you as you get close to the end too uh oh it stopped bonging well that's fine there we go we're parked and then if we look here we can see i'm exactly on the line on this side and there's like about an inch on that side you don't have to like crack open the door to find out. Fantastic. Park. So overall, what do I think about the Hyundai Nexo? Um, I really liked this car and as a manual loving gasoline powered car loving guy, I was surprised how much I enjoyed an electric vehicle. And if this is the direction we're going in and things should only get better from here, I'm quite excited to see what the future of driving has to offer. Um, there are issues, of course, with this car, but I'm not that qualified to talk about it since I'm used to cars that are under $25,000 and I'm not picky enough to notice these things for this level of car. Uh, the elephant in the room is the hydrogen power. Is this really the future or is battery electric vehicles going to be the wave of the future? I'm pretty sure the battery electric vehicle route is going to be the actual way we're going. So this is kind of like the beta max of electric vehicles. But ignoring that, this has been a wonderful car and I'm excited to see what the future has to bring.